The end of the 15th century was within distant grasp. Improvements within nautical technology begged to be tested on new and vast waters. The Ottomans have realized that their conquest of Constantinople can serve a higher purpose than bragging rights, and have cut off the trade with the Far East for Europe. Prince Henry the Navigator's expansionist policies within Portugal have proved well for the nation. Explorers have pushed far down the coast of West Africa and discovered the Atlantic islands of Madeira and Azores. Traditional Portuguese, Spanish, and Italian trade routes in the Mediterranean are failing, and the waters of the Atlantic beckon. It is during this time that our first player on the exploration stage will come into play. His name is Christopher Columbus, an Italian who has tried and failed to find commissions in his native land of Portugal and England. Celebrity couple and joint monarchs Ferdinand II and Isabella I of Spain grant him the necessities for his voyage to Asia, and Columbus lands in India in 1492. It is here that he explores the island of Hispaniola. He will later lead three more voyages to India and explore parts of Cuba and the Central American coast. Plot twist, says Amerigo Vespucci, and probably Columbus to himself, but we don't talk about that. These lands are actually a new continent. Portuguese explorers discovered that Brazil is a thing. That split the world in half, says Portugal and Spain, in the Treaty of Tordesillas. 90% for Spain and 10% for Portugal. Seems even. Hernan Cortes would go on to decimate the Mesoamerican tribes, and Francisco Pizarro would lead his small army to victory over many of the indigenous peoples in South America. They also instituted the Encomienda system, thus the natives of the land. By the age's high point, Spain had clearly emerged as a winner with a territorial extent spanning from California to the southern tip of Argentina. We'll need the slave trade to support our growing colonial economy. Scientists at the time just figured out that there are better ways to figure out mapping than guessing using nautical maps with seaward routes and ocean currents that lead to coastlines. Vasco da Gama finds a sea route to India, and Portugal finds a few key ports on the subcontinent, such as Calicut and Goa. Not even a decade later, Portugal seizes the Indonesian port of Malacca, giving them a massive trading empire in Asia that allows them to send various unique spices back to Europe, which is very profitable. Japan decides that their country will be closed, we should get in on this colonization business, says England, Holland, and France at the exactly the same time. Britain defeats the Spanish Armada in the most risky move of the century, which leads to the decline of Spain and the rise of Britain in world affairs. North America turns out to be a bit of a cultural melting pot, and India ends up being a three-way chess game between France, England, and the Dutch. Screw this, said the Dutch, stealing portion from Portugal and Indonesia. Luckily, Britain puts a stop to this nonsense after discussing it for seven years with France and emerges with the dominant power in India and the Americas. I'm sure this will last a long time. One of the many parallels and connections that can be drawn between the age of exploration and modern day is the rise of globalization. Events such as the Triangle Trade and Columbian Exchange helped to give rise to the relatively modern phenomenon known as globalization, and without these events we would not have many of the goods that we use on a daily basis today.